Algebraic fractions. The key to algebraic fractions, always factorise first. Before you do anything else, you factorise. And a bit hard to write this one in the words. So only cancel complete parentheses, not bits of them. Because right, I know we love cancelling. Oh, look, X, X. Brilliant. No, nope, got to be completely the same. So I'll start off with a very, very simple one. Of course, there's no factorising to be done on this one. Um, which is just, how do we cancel? Well, obviously the 16 on 24 becomes two thirds. The uh, B squared and the B cubed, the A into the A cubed, and the, what else we got there? C into the C squared. So they are the first sort of cancelling ones I guess we got. Then we moved on to something like this. So what's the first thing I'm going to do here? Factorise, of course. Well done. So what do you reckon I factorised first? What would you do first, the top or the bottom? Hands up those who would factorise the top first. Hands up who would factorise the bottom first. Because I would do the bottom first. It's just a common factor. That's real quick. So to me, I'd go 2a outside of the p minus q first. Then on the top, because there's a couple of things I've got to do. I've got the common factor of a outside of p squared minus q squared. Then I can turn it into the difference of two squares. Now we can see if there's cancelling. So the P minus Q, the complete parentheses exactly the same, that'll cancel. And the A will cancel as well, leaving us P plus Q on two. Okay, ah, fractions, multiplying fractions. What do you always do first when multiplying fractions? Thank you, always factorize first. Maybe I didn't mention that. Okay, let's factorize. Well, which ones will we factorize first? What would you do first? You do the 9x squared minus 1 first? Okay. Anyone else? Interestingly, I'd do those first. Because there's nothing I can do with them. But I need to put parentheses around them so I can see whether or not things are going to cancel. So I suppose effectively I'm, I'm taking out a common factor of 1. We have a quadratic, we have a difference of two squares. So we reckon the difference of two squares first. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a quicker one to factorise. Then the other one, ooh, multiplies together to give negative three. Mind you, this is a little bit easier. There's only one way we can get one, and that's one times one. But at the front, we've got a three. Three's a prime number. We know that has to be three times one. It's just a matter of getting the plus and minus the right way around. So we'd end up with three X minus one, X plus one. So now the X plus one with the X plus one, the three X plus one with the three X plus one. Oh, look, everything cancels. And we're left with one. So that's just one. Isn't that interesting? Doesn't matter what you substitute in for x there, you'll always come up with the answer one. Hmm. Uh-oh, division, dividing fractions. Well, before we can do dividing fractions, what do you do? Factorize, good, we're catching on. Always factorize first. But the other thing I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna turn the second one up upside down. Remember that with division and fractions, invert and multiply? Um, now the 3a and the 6a squared b will stay as they are. Which one would I have done first? a b minus 2b squared or the quadratic? What do you reckon? And I agree. That's what I would have done first too. That's just got a common factor. The other one, multiply together 4, adds together to give negative 2. Oh, that's a perfect square, isn't it? So that'll be a minus 2b all squared. So now we can play around with the cancelling. A minus 2B cancels with the A minus 2B, the A with the A squared, and we have 1 over 2A, A minus 2B. Ooh, subtraction. Before you can add and subtract fractions, what do you have to do? No! Factorise! Always factorise first. Okay. <laughs> so... Now, once it's factorised, then we can work out the common denominator. But we need it to be factorised first, because that basically is what the common denominator is. We get all the factors. So how do I do it? Well, what I do is draw in a vinculum, and then the bottom of the fraction. Well, how do I work it there? Basically, I say to myself, if it's not there, put it down. So I just start reading across. A... Well, it's not there, so I put it down. There's my A. A minus 1, it's not there, so I'll put it down. A minus 1. A, oh, it's already there. Don't need to worry about it. A plus 1, it's not there, I'll put it down. That becomes my common denominator. So how to work out the new numerators? I look at it now and say, well, what's different? 
to compare. Well, the denominator was a a minus one. It's now a a minus one a plus one. What's different? A plus one. So that is what we'll multiply the top by. So that a plus one now becomes a plus one squared. Now the second fraction, it was a a plus one. We want it to be a a minus one a plus one. What's different? So that's what we'll multiply the top by. Don't forget the minus sign, of course. Minus a minus one squared. Now, what's the next step? Right. We can't cancel yet. Because of that minus on the top. You can only cancel once everything's factorized. The top now has to be done. There's two or three ways we could do the top now. I think I heard someone say expand. Is that what you said? Someone said it. So yes, we could expand the top out and then tidy it up and we just get 4a. That's one way you could have done it. Another way you could have done it, you said, hang on, this is the difference of two squares. So I know it'll be a plus one minus a minus one. I think that's two. And then in the other one, it'll be a plus one plus a minus one, which is 2a. Two times 2a, 4a. Could have done it that way. Another way you could have done it, you could look at it and say, hang on, these are both perfect squares. And I know the pattern of a perfect square. I know it's going to go a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And the other one will go a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. But I'm subtracting. So what's going to disappear and what's going to stay? Perfect square minus a perfect square. What's disappearing? The a squared will disappear. The b squared is going to disappear. So instead of getting twice the product, so 2ab, I'm going to get four times the product because the first one's going to give me 2ab and then I'm going to go minus, minus 2ab, 4ab. So there's lots of different shortcuts you could do, but a lot of people just, as I've done here, expand the whole thing out and then just tidy up. I've got 4a. Up to you how you do it. Yeah. Uh, oh, a's will cancel and we get four on a minus one, a plus one. But if you can find those shortcuts, it can save you a lot of time. Oh, a mixture of addition and subtraction. <sighs> so what have we got to do? Anyone? Oh, we're getting there, factorized, good. Well, they've been nice to us. The first two are already factorized. So the second one, difference of two squares. Now we've got to get a common denominator. If it's not there, put it down. X plus Y squared, put it down. X minus Y squared, put it down. X plus Y, well, hang on, X plus Y squared's there. When you've got that sort of thing, you always have to go with the highest power. So I've got X plus Y and X plus Y squared. I need X plus Y squared, it's already there, I'm okay. If that had been x plus y cubed, then I would have had to change that square to a cube. You, you need the highest power. And x minus y, same deal. We've got the x minus squared all there. So we should be okay. What is different? I look at the first fraction. x plus y squared, compare it. What's different? x minus y squared. So we'll write that down. Second fraction, I've got x minus y squared. My new denominator, what's different? x plus y squared, so we'll write it down. Now the last one, the denominator was x plus y, x minus y. What's different? So I need to multiply the top, which is at this stage negative 2, by another x plus y, x minus y. So again, we could expand the whole thing out, or, oh, let's see. You know, before I reveal the answer, let's see if I can. I got a perfect square plus a perfect square this time. So it's the middle term that's going to disappear because one will be plus 2xy, one will be minus 2xy. That'll disappear. So I must have 2x squared, 2y squared. But now I'm going to subtract twice the difference of two squares. Okay, so where was I? 2x squared, 2y squared, minus 2x squared. They're gone. Minus, minus 2y squared. I think 4y squared. Let's see how we go. If we expanded the whole thing out, tidy up. 4y squared, we do end up with that. So that's what I mean, if you look at the pattern, you notice patterns, but if you start doing too much in your head at once, and you're going, oh, I'm starting to lose the track here, then just write it down, and then you'll, you'll get there. Okay, so that's one D.